can you understand the, the supporters' frustration, and do you have your thoughts on what direction this franchise needs to go, how it should go? Yes, and I, I can understand the fans' frustration because I think that's shared amongst the people at this club, uh, the employees, the staff, and the players as well. And if you're asking me what I think needs to happen going forward with a new coach and what I would what I would want to see, um, I think, in my opinion, ideally, you want to have uh, a sense of direction. And what I mean by that is you want to have an identity at the club. You want to have, you know, when you look at the Vancouver Whitecaps from anyone's perspective, whether you're uh, an opponent or a fan or part of the club, you want to know exactly a true identity of this club. And I think that's something that we've been lacking. People need to know who the Whitecaps are, and we need to know who we are. And that starts from inside. So we need to establish a culture here of what it means to be a white cap and how much it means to wear the jersey and that we're privileged to play for this team and for this city. And that needs to change going forward because I think that's something we've lacked this season. There's considerable pressure on the front office and on management. Do you also understand where that's coming from? I know this team has spent a little bit in the past. I think supporters would like to see them spend more. I don't mean to put you on the hot seat, but you're that's in front of us, so I want to ask you. Do you have confidence in the front office the way things have been done, or do they also need to reevaluate how things have been done? I think I think there's pressure now because of the influx of money that has that has come from the Alfonso Davies uh, deal, which is when that sum of money comes in, you know you're you're somewhat expected to do things, um, but you know I don't think money always solves every problem, and in, that's not talking about soccer in general. That's talking about life. I think first and foremost, we need to, start, like I said earlier in the, in the previous question, we need to establish the culture here and the identity of the club, and then the pieces start to come after. But you need to set a solid foundation here. And the pressures that maybe fans, media, uh, players are, are, are putting on the upper management, I think that's shared between all of us across the board because it's not one one person that this all lies. It's not, it's it's collectively as a club, as a whole. And that's talking about the, from the youth teams to the to the men's team and all, and everyone in between. It has to be a collective effort to make this, uh, to make this whole thing work. And in establishing that culture, it can't just be management. This needs to be a trickle down effect. It has to start from management with the new coach and the players as well. And the players need to preach and, and you know, basically, uh, follow that culture and live that culture because it's not just who you are and what you do on the field. This is a culture that we need to establish as players on the field, but as people in the community and city as well. Are you confident going forward that uh, that they're heading in the right direction and do you want to be a part of that, Russell? I, you know, someone asked me uh, what it meant for me to, to play for this, for this city and for this club. And, uh, you know, I had to think about that question because it, it may mean more to my parents. And, and the way I'd answer that question is, this club is is a, a family to me, and I've become part of this family. So if it means a lot to my parents, mm -hmm. it means more to me. And playing for this club, playing for this jersey, playing for this city, it's playing for my family. And that's, that's the culture that we need to establish here, that you're not just playing for a club, you're playing for a family. And they give us every opportunity to do that here. So I'm confident in this club, I'm confident in the direction, um, I'm optimistic about it, and uh, I want to be a part of it. Do you feel in MLS that from season to talked about the, the culture um, that you want to see at the club, and obviously you've, you've kind of bled for the shirt. Do you think, and, and there's lots of moving pieces here with contracts and out of contracts mm -hmm. and options for next year with lots of guys, and you don't have to name names, but do you feel there's guys that bleed that culture as well, and, or do you feel that the, more of the guys that you've played with this season um, maybe don't represent what this club needs? Yeah. Um what I will say to that is there are a few group of guys, a few members of this team that really do know what it means to be a Vancouver Whitecap. And I want to see those guys here next season. But there has been a lack of respect for the jersey in this season. And that can't happen anymore. Going forward into 2019, you have to respect this jersey and respect this club. You've really been taking on more of a leadership role this season. Is that something that you see yourself continuing to... Uh, grow in that role next year and in coming years? Do you expect to be uh, more of a leader with the team? I'm still learning. I'm, uh, I'm still growing and understanding what it means to be a true leader because you can be a leader but not lead in the right ways. 
and the, what it means to be a true leader and I'll reference Kennedy again it's not what you can do uh, it's not what the country can do for you it's what you can do for the country and that culture needs to happen here it's not what this team can do for you it's what you can do for this team and I'm still learning what it means to be a true great leader but I can tell you that I do want to be a part of that leadership group that leads this club in the right direction between, like you said, there's a couple of guys who really bled for the kit, who knew what the Whitecaps kit was all about, compared to those who maybe played for themselves. And is it a is it a uh, personal mindset that there's that divide? Is it a cultural thing? Is it a language thing? What is it? Because that's disappointing to hear, I think, from a supporter's perspective, where you have 11 guys on the, on the pitch, and maybe not all of them are pulling the rope the same way. Different motivations for different people. But, and that, that'll always be the case. There's different, uh, people will play for different things. That's always gonna happen. But as long as you're following the team goal, as long as you're playing for the team, then, and the team is first, then you're gonna have a good outcome, no matter what happens. You're gonna have a strong team and a solid foundation in the locker room. That being said, we did not have that this year. There was moving pieces. There was guys wanting in, to go in different directions and, like I've said previously, that can't happen in the 2019 season. We all, and like you alluded to, we all need to be pulling in the, in, the, in the same direction because if you have guys pulling in opposite directions, that creates friction, that creates tension, and that doesn't make for a good locker room. We do have a positive locker room here at the Whitecaps, but there's a difference between having a positive locker room and having a great locker room. And uh, I wouldn't say this season we had a great locker room. There was there was a divide in the locker room, and that needs to be worked on. That that needs to be addressed, and that can't happen going into next season because first and foremost, you need to have a good locker room with a good group of guys. And we do have a, a few and a core group of guys that, I, like I said, I'm hoping will be here next season. You were always held up as the academy guy that came through, and Afonso, I guess, as the, the guy that came through after you. There's been a big gulf in between. There's been lots of guys, signed contracts, just never had the opportunities. What did you put that down to? Is it just, does it need better integration of these young guys in the first team mix if we are to be a club that brings on young players? You're talking about our, our youth academy? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had friends that have left this club and, you know, they've been, uh, what I can say is what worked for me. And it's not always down to management to put you in the position to make this work. Sometimes it, it just comes down to your mentality and you yourself grinding it out. And to say that, that, that my climb here has been easy would be a big understatement. It's, it's been tough. Uh, and I don't take anything for granted when I do get c consecutive starts. But I think Alfonso Davies is proof, I'm proof that the program does work what I would say is the consistent belief from management, consecutive games, and just that shared confidence between player and manager that you are going to play will help a player a great deal, like it has for me in this back end of the season. Knowing that I'm playing, knowing that I'm getting minutes, you know, it, your confidence and your, and your style of play changes because you're, you can take risks that you wouldn't if you're going to be playing one game and then missing four or five. You want to take the safe option. But if you know you're going to be playing, you, you take that risk. So I don't know the formula for making it. And I don't think there is one formula for, uh, and you can umbrella the, the whole youth academy and say what will work. But you can, you can definitely establish something where the youth are coming in and getting games. Russ, I think all of us could agree on that watching what Fonzie did this season is probably the best thing about this franchise. What for you, from your perspective, being the veteran, being the leader that you are, um, most frustrating part? What disappointed you the most? What's going to bother you the most heading into the offseason about what transpired this season? Um, I think I've already... It, it does bother me, and, and I'll say it again, and I've said it before. The lack of respect for the jersey. That's something that's it's unacceptable. That's something that we saw in that Kansas City game. Um, and that's something that, again, it, never again. Um, we need to establish a culture and identity here of what it means to be a Vancouver Whitecap, what it means to play for the city, and what it means to play for this fan base, who have been loyal and honest in their assessment of us, but 
loyalty is something you can't buy and they've stuck through it with us through good times and bad and and they've stuck with me through good times and bad when a lot of people would have written me off you know they've supported me so i can attest to that 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 we have a strong supportive group here and um when you put the white caps jersey on you need to know what it means and we we need to establish that as a club what impact did the coaching change from mid season have on the locker room it was kind of towards the end of the season yeah. with yeah um well we all saw it we saw guys that were upset we saw guys that didn't agree with it but this is business this is this is the way business works and we're fortunate enough to do this for a living i think other other jobs are a lot more cutthroat than ours even those are ours is you need to accept business it's not personal and you have to remain a professional because that is our job we're professional athletes and we're privileged to do this for a living um it did have an effect on our locker room but it shouldn't have had the effect that it did we as a group collectively should have handled it better C expansion team is headed to the playoffs. What are the, some of the positive things that you think they're doing that we can improve on as a club? LAFC? Yeah. Well, they're, this is their first year. Um, and I think they had a, a little bit better of a first year than we did here when we first started out. Um, but you, when you look at LAFC, you see a, a, an identity at their club. You know how they're going to play. Um, you know who you're up against. And you can tell what it means to the players to play for that club you know you have you have uh will ferrell in the in the stands driving the team on and it, you know it's you know you can tell that you got you know there's they want to play for the club and and they have a, a team that is, is willing to wear the black and gold and represent la um and and again that's what i'll say here we need to have guys that are proud to wear blue and white and represent the city Uh, there's a lot of good players in the league. It's a very talented league. However, there's only a few amount of players that other opponents hate playing against. And where I'm taking this is Kendall, right? Obviously, you mentioned that you were, uh, you know, sad and upset about his words. But how important is his role, not only as a player, but also as a leader for the team who's always uh, ready to talk to the press, whether it's good or bad moments for the club? What's the, what's the, the question? Is, uh, how important is it to, to try to change his mindset? And so that he could be a part of that club, of the club next year. Well, he's he's always been a huge part of this club. When no matter where you are, when you're the captain of the, of the football club, you're a big part of the club, and you're the leader. And and guys will follow you no matter what you say or no matter what you do because you're wearing that armband. And as a as a true great leader, you need to know that, and you need to know the implications of your actions. Um, and I think it's it's a learning experience for all of us. Um, Kendall's a great guy, and Kendall's a friend of mine. So the turmoil right now between him and the club is something that needs to be addressed. I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't know what his mindset is going into the off season. And and to be honest, I don't know where the club is with Kendall. I don't I don't know where that relationship is is. But I know the club is a loyal club. The club is an honest club, and I know Kendall as a person, and he's a, he's a great guy. So I hope it works out. But it's hard for me to comment further just based on knowledge. I don't know enough that's going on. But I'm sure we'll all find out soon enough. There was a trade made early in the season that affected the midfield. Uh, and I wanted to ask, you know, I feel like the, it took a long time for the, the lineup trade? to... Uh, the, the Parker... Okay. Trade. Uh, it took a long time for the lineup to kind of settle and it shifted to what it became at the end of the season. Coming after preseason preparations... Uh, how did that affect you personally, and what was your process for sort of, I guess, dealing with it after? Yeah. Well, we all know Tim Parker, and uh, I think we missed Tim Parker this season. Timmy was a great player on the field, um, but I think what I would say about Tim is that uh, he's a good guy off the field, and he is someone that you want in your locker room, um, and he's a leader. Whether or not he's wearing an armband, whether or not he's, you know, he's a leader, a true leader. And that's first and foremost a good guy. And those are the people you want in your locker room. Um, we had Felipe come in, and Felipe's a great player. And he showed that. He, I don't even know how many assists he had, but he's he impacts the game. So 
the lineup did change without Timmy Parker, obviously, in the back. But you bring in another quality MLS player who's been around the league, knows the league. So I can't say it it, it had a great impact. But, you know, it's always hindsight. Hindsight's always 20. We don't know what, what would have happened if Timmy was here or if Felipe wasn't here. So, you know, again, I don't think that had a, a big impact on things of where we are in the season.